Okay. Hi, Lance. Thank you so much for meeting with me and um and being the very, very first person that I interview in the Cool Cat video series. And I was telling Ooh. you a little bit about this, but this was a project that I started a really long time ago, about 14 years ago. And it's just interviewing cool people from the disability community and talking a little bit about, about what we do, why we do it, about our disabilities, about who we are, about, um, about our world really. And I ask the same set of questions of everybody. Usually what I've done is I've taken the questions, which I'm holding in my hand, and I email them to people, they write their responses and they send it back. And then I, I have posted it on my blog. But now I wanted to move it, expand it, make it video. And I still wanna ask the basic same set of questions because in asking the same set of questions, it's really interesting to see how people answer those same set of questions and what people's perspectives on the same questions are. And I think it really shows how different we are in the disability community and about the depth of our diversity. So that's a little bit about the Cool Cats Voices from the Disability Community um, Project. And I wanted to take a minute to to introduce you. You are Lancelot Kamaka, and you live on Oahu, and you are Native Hawaiian, and some yes, and you'll tell us more about that. And you have a large family, a large musical family, and you yourself are a musician and you've been a musician your whole life. And yeah, I think that is, I think that's good. Are, are, is it okay to move forward? Is that okay? Yeah, I the yeah. First that's good, that's good. <laughs> okay, thanks Lance. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is getting to know you part of the interview. What is your name? I think he said it a little while ago. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Lancelot Kamaka. Uh -huh. um, my mom named me Sir Lancelot, but I prefer a lot of my friends call me Lance because it sounds more ordinary, which I am ordinary. You're far from ordinary, Lance. No. Well. Okay. <laughs> So I'm a I'm a Trekkie, you know, I love Star Trek and I, I like Star Wars, it's okay, but I'm always interested in which one people prefer, Star Trek or Star Wars, if they have a preference. Which one do you prefer? I like Star Trek um, <laughs> because um, I grew up with the Star Trek and particularly the classic, the original that um, started from 1966 all the way to 71 with uh, Captain Kirk and uh, Spock, the logical man. Um, I used to listen to episodes um, when I used to come home from school is to turn on the TV and listen to, to them. Um, one time it was like I heard them once a week, and then they, I think when they did like reruns later on, they had it like every day. So that was cool to hear episodes. Now I heard there's um, several Star Trek now. They got like the Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, but they were kind of like way out there for me. Um, <laughs> And as television evolved, I think there was more, there's a lot more pictures, a lot more 
uh, things to see and not as much dialogue. Yeah. Uh, which is why I like the old television shows, the old um, Star Trek. Your Star Trek. Star Trek has always been very inspiring to me about disability because it it has always taken disability to a new frontier. Like in Next Generation, that series, mm -hmm. the chief engineer is blind. Wow. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I I love that. I love the way that they imagine, you know, possibility. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing I like about the original is that some of these things have come to pass, <laughs> like the cell phone. Yes. You know, like talking communicators. You know, yes. that's a cell phone, and they even got like um, wearable devices now yes. that uh, that are in. Um, implementing uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah. yeah. And you really are a techie. You love your technology, don't you, Vance? I always enjoy talking with you about technology. Yeah, I love technology, but I I call myself, I'm a novice mm -hmm. tech. I, I don't really know, like, you know, the... Um, the nuts and bolts of it. I just yeah. know, I just, you know, use technology because it makes my life easier. Yeah. And I just, you know, get by with what I know. Yeah. I, I think you're being humble, but I agree. It makes, it makes life easier. Oh, okay. So, so moving on next question. If you could live in any other country for two years, where would you go? Uh, it, well, for the longest time, it was um, Africa because I was told that that's the roots of like rhythm and blues, rock and roll. You know, it 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 um, started there, so I wouldn't mind going there, um, staying there, but. Nowadays, I have a dear friend who lives in New Zealand, and um, now I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going there for a couple of years. It seems like a beautiful place. Oh, um, yeah, I forgot I one heard. question. I'm sorry, I skipped over one. What's your connection with disability? I am, I am blind from birth totally blind mm -hmm. and uh, I have a mild almost say my moderate to severe hearing loss mm -hmm. and I am one of two brothers with this with the same condition mm -hmm. uh, due to a genetic disease called Norris mm -hmm. so Okay, thank you. And then the last question for this part is, if we had a community picnic potluck, a big community picnic potluck, um, what dish would you bring? Oh, no question about it. I, I, I would bring, I would bring ahi pokey. <laughs> I'd bring several pounds of it. <laughs> Yeah, are you pokey with limo? <laughs> some show you. Ooh, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So, I was wondering if you could tell us something about music and your family's relation to music. Like you as a musician, your family, the music in your family. All of that. Can you talk stories about that for a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, it all started with my mom. You know, we, we it it's um you know like they say, um it's in the blood. We I really believe that 
God gave me and my brothers, my mom, my whole family, the gift of music. And um, from small kid time, I used to go to uh, parties. Mm-hmm. And my, you know, my family members that they, after they have a few drinks, they, they you know, take out their ukulele, guitar, and stuff, and I would listen to them. And then I realized um, one day um, some of my cousins, when I went to their house for the vacation, they put me on the piano, Mm -hmm. and I could actually hear what they were singing, and I could actually play the note that they were um, singing. Um, and then I knew then I had something going on with my music. And I was only like eight years old then. Uh, but as time went on, it started to manifest itself. Um, and then at the age of 10, I did have a little formal training. Um, on the piano, I had some training on ukulele. Um, and then later on, I learned how to play the guitar. Um, when I was going to intermediate, I played the drum. So yeah, I, I played multiple instruments, but my primary instrument to this day is the piano and um, keyboards. And um, my whole family was musically inclined, so my brothers and I would listen to the radio. Uh, and this is when I was taking lessons because I was getting bored. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't like the lessons. I didn't like the exercise. I just wanted to hear the music and play. And I could. Um, that was the gift. I could just listen to the radio. My brother and I would listen to the radio and we would actually sing. I would harmonize to a particular song. And uh, my mom would come in and say, wow, that's good. So then she would tell my step, she would call my stepdad in mm-hmm. and he would listen and wow. They would use the word shock. Many great, you know, uh, and so from there, um, well, as the, at the end of the 1960s, 1970s, when a group called the Jackson Five really uh, they started their thing, we we wanted to be just like them. Mm-hmm. My old, my older brother, my no, my younger brother, um, used to sing like Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. He had a high voice, so he was like the ace of a group of the group. And um, so yeah, me and my two brothers, and then I had my mom, and my stepdad, and my uncle, my cousin, and um, my mom. She used to read this book, and there was this mom, a lady, who called her son the jewels. So my mom said, oh, I want to call my son the three jewels. And then my cousin came along when he, when he um, joined our group. He had a drum set that was Pearl May. So there we had, there you have it, like the name of the group was the three jewels and the pearl. And we take small gatherings in the beginning and then by word of mouth and later on my mom and my stepdad had these cards that would have their phone number to call. So like we branched out and played for parties and uh, we even went to other islands, mm-hmm. and we started actually as a group in the 1972 
all the way to like the late um, 80s, 90s. And um, through all of that, we went through a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, personnel. Yeah. Um, my cousin went on his own. You know, um, people grow up and they grow out and they go their own way. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, at the end, it was like we just called ourselves the jewels mm -hmm. because um, it was just me, my younger brother, and my mom and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. And we had like friends that would join us. People were that we would audition, mm -hmm. and they would join our group. Mm -hmm. Which did you play? Would you play a song, not necessarily from mm -hmm. the Jewels, but just a song? Because I noticed you're holding the ukulele. Yeah, sure. I um, I play a song by Radiz, a guy from the Makassan. Uh -huh. And uh, there's this song called In This Life. Okay. Because I fully believe that whatever we do, whatever we do in this life will determine how we live our next life. Mm. Okay. Okay. Oh, I've been blessed with in my life. There was emptiness in me. I was in prison by the power of the Lord. With one kind touch, you set me free. Let the world stop turning. Let the sun stop turning. Let the holy love stop going through. If the world falls apart, I'm not here in my heart. The only dream that have some truth in this life. I was led by you. For every mountain I have climbed, every raging earth along. You are the treasure that I want to find. Without your love, I would be lost. Let the world stop turning. Let the world stop turning. Let the world be lost. That something's wrong with the volume. The volume's not going. Something's wrong with the volume right now. I can't hear you at all. Okay. 
Beautiful, Maz. You're so Thank you. talented. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, when you were when you were telling me to, um, you, you couldn't hear me. That because yeah. I was playing the music. Yeah. Uh, that was music interlude. Part in that. Ah. Oh, so okay. I wasn't singing. I was just I was doing a solo on my ukulele. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, as a joke solo that nobody could hear. <laughs> <laughs> so you know i was wondering because so in your family your your dad is hawaiian right yes my real dad is pure so hawaiian your biological dad okay mm -hmm. pure hawaiian but he, he what's but you that were not raised by him right what's that again oh. yeah you were not raised by your biological dad, right? Um, not really. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I was yeah a little bit, okay. but um, uh, my my mom, my mom and him got uh, they broke up, they divorced. And mm -hmm. She remarried again. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So um, really um. My family is um, a mixture. Mixture. Hawaiian. Uh, my mom has that Spanish, mm -hmm. English, and now my stepdad is Filipino. Wow, that's great. So, so it's all chop suey. No. <laughs> chop suey. Would you, would you say that, what would you, how would you, or I don't know, it's, Because there is a lot of disability in your family, right? Because the you're not the only um, blind person in your family, right? Or the no, you're not. No, no, no. I, I, as I was saying earlier, I do have two other brothers uh -huh. who are also blind and hard of hearing. Uh -huh. um, uh, and then I also have a, a nephew who was born like that, uh -huh. um, with this disease, um, Nori syndrome, um, there's variations of it. So like when my, uh, when my nephew was born, he wasn't only born blind, but he was also born mentally challenged. Uh -huh. So there's different strains of the syndrome that we have. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, and then um, my mom and my sister were the carrier of the gene mm -hmm. that caused our disabilities. Mm -hmm. How was disability viewed in your family when you're growing up? Well, um... You know, um, oh, that, that's kind of a kind of a hard question. But um, a lot of my family members were some of them overly helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know that's my responsibility to mm -hmm. tell them uh, that I can do certain things on my own. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really um, 
should I say, pampered, taken care of by my parents. And um, uh, when I when I used to go, when I got with my um, relatives, my cousins, you know, they they um, they um, they treated me like really really nice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was feeling sorry for us. Mm -hmm. um, although there, I know there was a um, couple of my relatives who treated us just like everybody else, and I love those kind of people. I mean, anybody, mm -hmm. anybody that um, would just approach us like you approach everybody, anybody. Mm -hmm. Is it that we couldn't see and we can't hear? And you may have to speak louder, mm -hmm. things. But I would like to be treated as like somebody, you know, anybody else. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the older I get, the more aware of this mm -hmm. I become. When I was growing up, I was thinking, well, you know, this is the way it's got to be, and this is how it has to be, and so on. Yeah. So it sounds like there was like a mix. There was some people who really saw disability as something that, like, that you, you weren't capable of doing stuff by yourself, and then other people would see it as just what it is like a, a something that's a part of your life and that's all right yeah 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 so there's just a real a lot of differences in how people would see it but do you think that culture played a part in how people perceived your disabilities or thought looked at your disabilities or your 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 brother's disabilities yeah i think a lot of it has to do with culture yeah. Yeah. Um, like. Um, yeah. As um, we um, actually we're not supposed to really, in our culture, nobody. Uh, there's this thing. Um, there's this saying, and most. It's mostly my um, the older ones used to tell you this. You need to be seen, not heard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. so a lot of, you know, if you kind of like spoke up in front of the grown-ups, they would tell you, "Be quiet." Yeah. yeah. We're talking. We're doing things. So I mean, you know, there's, uh, there was a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing those perspectives. Um, so I was wondering, just moving on on these questions, um, because I'll get real sidetracked talking about everything else. <laughs> um, yeah. I was just wondering, where where would you like to see yourself in five years? This is the kind of things that I used to think about growing up. And now that I'm grown up, the things have changed so much. So now I, I, I don't really see myself what, what I want to do in five years. I'm kind of like whatever happens in my life, and whatever, wherever it leads me, I'll just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. I'll take it one day at a time. Because mm -hmm. life is short, you know. And the older I get, the more shorter my life becomes. Yeah. So I just got to embrace the present, what I have, what I can do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
not to be morbid, but what do you want people to like those people, people in the world to remember about you when you are gone? Or is there anything that you want people to remember about you or your life after you've gone? Yeah, um, I want people to remember me as the guy who really loved music, okay. and he also loved the Lord. Yeah. And um, yeah. And I tried to be a nice person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to be remembered as. Okay. Um, the last question for this section is who or what inspires you? Well, when I was growing up, yeah, a lot of it goes back to when I was growing up. I, I used to listen to a lot of music mm -hmm. and, um, the one that really, um, inspired me because I used to like to um, listen to his songs and I used to emulate his singing a lot. And that was none other than Stevie Wonder, uh, who is also blind, but you know, it's not because of his blindness. It was, he had great musicianship. He was a great singer. Um, so yeah, he inspired me a great deal. But nowadays, you know, as time goes on to the present, really, I don't have anyone that inspires me anymore, mm -hmm. except for anybody here on this earth. Anyway, the only one that inspires me now is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that inspires me because he's perfect. Mm -hmm. He never fails. Mm -hmm. He's not a, you know, like us humans with so many flaws. He's flawless. Mm -hmm. I can go on, but uh, I don't want to turn this into a sermon. So <laughs> we, might, we might have to start passing the collection bag around. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, if you, this this next section is about disability. Um, if you could say anything to young Lance, to, you know, to yourself from the past, um, yourself that was really struggling, having a hard time with something related to disability, what would you say? I would say, if you can see me mm -hmm. from the future, mm -hmm. you would you would know that. Hey, I I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I still I made it through. Yeah, yeah. I made it through all the um the struggles. Yeah, I'm not there yet. It's an ongoing thing, but that's what I could tell my younger self. I would say, you can do it. Yeah, You can do it. And I would also add that do not take what you have for granted. Yeah. Take every opportunity. Yeah. Go out there. Yeah. Party like a rock star. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, what do you like about your particular disability? You mean like being blind and part of hearing? Well, is that, is I that think you... you identify mostly with being blind, right? Because you've been blind your whole life. Yeah, yeah. And that's very much part of who you are. But I, it seems to me like the hearing loss or the deaf gain 
you know, the hearing mm. loss part of it, that's a newer one. And that has been more challenging for you to accept and stuff, right? Yeah, that's hardly anything I like about that. Yeah, <laughs> hardly anything you like about that one. Yeah. No. So, yeah, my blindness, what I mostly yeah. like about it yeah. is that, oh, especially when I, when I, when I was younger, mm -hmm. I was boarding in a school, Hawaii mm -hmm. school for deaf and blind, and I was in the dorm, and I could, uh, when it um, was time to go to bed, mm -hmm. and to me, it was kind of early to go to bed, uh -huh. uh, eight o'clock at night. So uh -huh. what would happen is that as I got really into reading Braille, which is my primary um, reading, um, I would, I could actually take a book. Uh -huh and put it under the covers and read it, read the uh -huh. Braille. I don't have to look at the lights or I don't need no light to see. Yeah. Um, and I could read. I got caught doing this one time, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's part of the kid life, you know, part of growing up. And, um, but um, I enjoyed it because I love to read. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's, that's what I like most about being blind. Yeah. And um, then I also, when my hearing was normal, you know, people say, well, you know, you're blind and your sense of hearing compensates for that. Um, or it's sharper. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that. I just say that it is used more. Mm -hmm. I think if if a lot of you are born blind and could hear, I mean, have normal hearing, your hearing would become your eyes. You could, like, mm -hmm. oh man, when I was growing up, I used to run around. I, I, I for a long time, I never used the cane because I relied on my sense of hearing. Mm -hmm. I could hear when I'm approaching walls mm -hmm. or doors. I could, yeah, my ears was missed by um, my eyes. Yeah. When you're saying that just reminded me of last year when I burned my eyes and I, and I, I couldn't see and I got really scared because you know, I've grown up deaf and I rely on my eyes so much for everything. And I was really like scared because even though I know so many people in the disability community who are blind, I felt like, okay, it would be okay if I'm blind, but I need more time to get ready. I need more time to get used to it. And I was so scared of having a sudden leap into being blind, you know, like, Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I rely on my eyes so much. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. The brain really, really is the um the thing that adapts your environment, your surroundings. Um and if you have enough determination and time, like you say, time. Yeah. You can get used to it. Yeah. I've I've I've, I've witnessed um, friends who um, they go to um, school for the blind, Ho'opono, and they have this thing called uh, uh, new visions, where they're actually blindfolded, oh. and they actually go around and try to do things. You know, it's like a prepared thing. You know, the, the, the thing is, uh, be prepared, don't be scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, uh, makes, that makes a lot of sense. So, is there any one thing that you wish that people would get that they would understand about disability? Mm. 
Yeah. Um, I think to have a double disability like my blindness and my hearing impairment um, is that it is a double disability. Because I've heard some people say, well, you know, I, I got a, I have a friend or whoever who has, who's hard of hearing, but the person can see. Yeah, right. And it makes a big difference. It's different, yeah. To be able to see. And then, and then the other thing, I wish, I really wish, and I, uh, I've said this earlier, mm -hmm. I really wish that many of people wouldn't be afraid. Because mm -hmm. it, it just seems like there are a lot of people are afraid mm -hmm. to say things. Yeah. To do things. Yeah. You know, because they're afraid that they're going to offend you. Although there are some people, some people I know who are very, very, very highly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to learn to have thick skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this this world is tough. Life is tough. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be all cream cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's not going to be all high high pokey all the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some um, sour lemons that sing. Hey, if life gives you lemon, make lemonade. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I know that's a uh, cliche, but I like yeah. it. You got to try to implement. Is, yeah. It still is relevant because it's it's choosing to, to, to see if to see a perspective that might feel better, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like to add that, um, like a lot of you, you know, music is not my only passion. Mm -hmm. It is my greatest passion, mm -hmm. but I love sports. Mm -hmm. I, I check out sports on the radio or mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. um, mainly football, basketball. I know football season's coming up, mm -hmm. and um, I, I guess out of my two brothers and my nephew, I'm the one who is like sports inclined. I, I just feel like, you know, the more you can broaden your horizon, mm -hmm. the better you can relate mm -hmm. to different types of people. Mm. Yeah regardless of disability or non-disability. Mm -hmm. Just humanity, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're all people. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's so true. So technology, let's, can we just talk for a minute about technology? So both like this, a single piece of technology that makes your life easier and, you know, can you also take a minute and explain how we are communicating? How, because yeah. from my end, I have, my hearing aids are connected to the computer and the volume goes directly from the computer into my ears and mm -hmm. I have captions going. How is it from your end, Lance? What are, what, how are you able to to be communicating with me right now in this technology? Well, like you, my hearing aids are, I would say, paired. Mm -hmm. You know, Bluetooth is a really big thing yeah. when yeah. it was first introduced back in the 90s, but then when, it, when um, hearing aids incorporated that Bluetooth, mm -hmm. it it was a game changer because mm -hmm. I can hear mm -hmm. both sides. I don't have to use the phone, the yeah. conventional means where you just put your one ear by the phone. Yeah. Uh, you can actually hear with both ears. So this is how I'm communicating with you on Zoom. Um, but that's 
that's only part of it. Yeah. Um, the other part of it is um, um, a braille display that I have. I'm using a uh, Mantis 240. Mm -hmm. um, well, thanks to a program called I Can Connect, mm -hmm. which is um, um, part of the National Helen Keller Center thing and the FFC, they work together to provide telecommunication mm -hmm. devices for people who are blind, deaf, blind, hard of hearing, mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. So in 2012, mm -hmm. um, I well, I, I bought my first iPhone in 2011. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was just using Siri. Uh, I couldn't do nothing else. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I was just using my hearing aid. So I wasn't using Bluetooth at that time. I was just using Siri. And um, Siri... I'm not sure. A lot of people, a lot of my friends would say Siri is a lot more hard of hearing than I am because I would communicate with Siri and Siri would actually give me wrong names, <laughs> mispronounce things. Uh -huh. And it, it got so bad that I was forced to learn gestures on the phone um, that... Um, some of you blind people can understand using voiceover. And some of you guys who know about Apple, um, they were right around 2011 or 2010, mm -hmm. Apple iPhone has become very innovative, mm -hmm. life changing for many of us. And then in 2012, I was introduced to this I Can Connect program mm -hmm. and I got my first Braille Note device. Mm -hmm. And I was, I learned how to pair it with my phone. Mm -hmm. So now I can read whatever comes out on my phone, mm -hmm. like text messaging, mm -hmm. emails, and even captioning. Mm -hmm. Um, just recently, um, maybe about a year or so, um, Apple has, has had its own built-in live captioning. Wow. And, uh, I'm able to read it. It's not perfect. I don't think captioning is perfect because it relies on voice recognition and voice recognition is not perfect. So, um, Combined with my hearing, with my hearing aid, mm -hmm. and the captioning, it actually um, enhances the mm -hmm. communication experience. That's amazing. So you're using a Braille display right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're reading with your hands what I'm saying. Yes, I am. That's so cool. That's really, really cool. So what is the single piece of technology that makes your life easier? Would you say it was that the iPhone? Was that what you were saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to say the iPhone okay. and uh, my Braille display because it opens up a world of communication. Yeah. Yeah. It goes beyond even hearing, you know. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. That's and it, you know it trends that it's transcending because I know even um, you don't have to now. Well, prior to getting all this, you know, technology with my phone and my um, my braille note taker, I had to rely on just hearing 
And I, I went to the Helen Keller National Center mm -hmm. and I was learning sign language. Mm -hmm. Not many people know sign language. Mm -hmm. So for me, this ability to read, mm -hmm. I think is universal. I call it the great equalizer. Because mm -hmm. I, can, I can communicate with just about anyone. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has an iPhone, Android, whatever. I can communicate with them. Yeah. It is. It really is. And it appeals to a large, you know, a larger mass than, say, sign language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... The next question is, where else can we find you online? And I had wanted to share your your YouTube channel as well as like some of the other videos on YouTube that that are there of you playing music. Is it okay if we play a song now from from YouTube? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. This one is on the CSC channel, the Comprehensive Service Centers serving deaf, hard of hearing, deaf, blind for the state. And they posted a video of you um, listen to the music. And, okay, I'm going to play it now, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, I think we got, I think I stopped the share. Okay. I'm not feeling extremely confident about my my capability with with this resume recording, but um but I'll I I think that it's it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be okay. I'm not confident. Yeah, I'm glad, good. I'm glad you found that recording. Okay, yeah. I'm glad so, you found it. That was one of my recording. good ones. And Les, I can't thank you enough for for meeting with me and for talking with me about your life and your experiences and and thank you so much for being my first guest in in this in this video series the cool cat video series the first video guest and You're welcome actually my first guest for hawaii too i haven't done this year so it's this is nice. this is awesome and i'm so happy that it's you because i've enjoyed getting to know you over the past few years and just having this friendship with you. So thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Aloha, everyone. Okay. <laughs>